Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, we are going to react to, I saw a cool video on these recommended, our Crocodilians OP Tier Zoo. Tier Zoo, great channel. Of course they're OP, all right? This video was made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. Sorry, I, I'm just, I'm trying to, okay. Overkill. There, there are several factors you can look at to determine where a build belongs on the tier list. Do they have any uniquely overpowered abilities? Are they responsible for major declines in the player bases of other factions? Do they have good matchups against other top tiers? These are all important. You had Another them, good Rhino. indicator is how long a build's core strategies and stats have stood the test of time. If a build has managed to succeed across multiple balance patches and new game expand. I mean, of course, crocodilians are OP. They're when people say that something's a living dinosaur, I, I'm pretty sure they mean it. It means that, like, I moved my camera, so now I gotta check to make sure that it is still... That's good, right? Um, a uh, living dinosaur. Th I, it just means that they're, they are relatively very little changed evolution-wise in their, you know, their body structure and everything for millions or hundreds of millions of years or since the dinosaurs or whatever. And so it, it, that means it's OP. It didn't have to change. That's like saying for over like the, you know, patch one, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say this in patches, but for the entirety of the game of life or not the entirety, Jesus, what he's trying to do here in like maybe 200 years, I'll cro call it crocodiles, maybe 150 the fact that they haven't had to change means there's they are OP and they've been OP. Same with sharks. That's a great indication that it dominates a highly stable niche in the meta. Could have said that in way For fewer example, words. dragonflies have been one of the top builds patrolling the airspace above swamps and lakes since the Carboniferous expansion. By the same token, expansion. sharks have been the dominant marine force since before the terrestrial the ads. servers were even yeah, added see to the sharks. Game. What? I'm about to drink some mud, and I think you should too. Really? People often ask us why. I'm, I'm good. And while not I don't quite mean, as mean old to be as either of these factions, crocodilians have also had a dominant hold on the same niche since even before the dinosaurs, having survived several of the harshest updates the game has ever seen. Despite this, I don't think any players are all that surprised at the crocodilians' extensive no. domination record. Very good. I mean, this is a build which combines downright Very good busted build, stats right. with arguably. So you got is intelligence really that high? Um, and their defense. Yeah, their power, their mobility. I know they're pretty fast on land, too. HP is pretty high, and stealth is high. Ooh, jeez. I mean, yeah. Probably the most effective strategy in the game, resource camping. So today, I'm going to break down all of the important features of the Crocodilian build and the strategies that they use to win games. Every build has its strengths and weaknesses, so my goal with this video just how good your your build has to be as he puts it tier zoo to to not have to change over all those different um events around the uh, for the world over millions of years is just insane and of course it's op is that it'll be useful as a guide for croc players trying to optimize their gameplay but also for other players that need what are you doing aliens in strategies Ooh. oh these you... and alligators because even though there are a few subtle differences between the builds, overall, their game plan is very similar. All right, so first, the croc's biggest strengths. First and foremost is their bite attack. The croc's bite is the strongest in the game, able to one-shot- I hear that about a lot of different things. I, I don't doubt it, but I, I feel like I hear a lot of like the strongest bite. I think I heard that about the hippopotamus too. Maybe not, or the uh, great white shark. Maybe this is right, but um, I feel like I hear that about a lot of things. Most low to mid HP targets and deal oh, serious done. damage even to the bulkiest players. 
One important thing to note bulky. is that this bite deals crunch He's not going to pop the tire. <laughs> one of the few attacks in the game powerful enough to overwhelm most defenses. I mean, I've Even seen dogs do that. Armor seen in builds like oh. the turtle and armadillo aren't enough to stop it. But as powerful and damaging as the croc's bite is, crocodilian players actually Ooh. aren't optimized for direct damage. Ooh. In fact, most tank builds can recover from a single bite without much consequence. That's a young wildebeest. Maybe it can survive. I feel like if that's an older one, then infection is just going to get that. The crocodilian's strategy revolves around being able to bring down large targets, usually ones that have a high enough Trample base HP to survive several powerful attacks. That's why, despite having the strongest bite I love how the they, game, like, kind of think the about it. They're like, whoa. And they're like, there's only one. Should we save them? Oh, maybe. Several powerful attacks. That's why, despite having the strongest bite force in the game, in terms of pure DPS, a croc's bite is surpassed by sharks due to their serrated, blade-like teeth. While a croc definitely could spec into this type of tooth, for the relevant matchups, the crocodile's curved conical teeth are more useful. These teeth make the crocodile's grapple much more difficult to break out of. Yeah, but... Yeah, then they might have to chase it down. True. I was going to say, yeah, but um, the bite that they take is going to take out a very big chunk with the serrated teeth of a shark. But maybe it'll kind of go away, survive long enough to kind of get away and make it a real inconvenience for the, for the crocodile to go get it. And... I think I think the more grapple like teeth rather than the serrated chopper slicer teeth makes it easy for it to you know it's it's game plan of grab it drag it back in the water drown it and kind of spin off its meat this so is where people the crocodile's to ability to take down tank builds really shines through. As their infamous grapple combo, the death roll, is one of the most powerful attacks in the game and can tear through the HP of even the bulkiest players. Let's continue with the, the hippos other getting pissed points. off. The most important ones are going to be the two abilities they use to maximize their effectiveness in the water for both stealth and mobility. First, their rudder like tail grants them a massive speed boost Ooh. while swimming. This is what shifts many a matchup in their favor when in combat Goodbye. in the You're water. You're done. As most oh, of the that was potential easy targets pickings. easily outmaneuver it on land. And second, their nostrils and eyes being situated on top of their heads grants them a unique ability to remain so almost cool. completely hidden underwater while still remaining vigilant of their above water surroundings and allows them to keep their stamina topped up by not forcing them to hold their breath. All right, now let's get into the croc's weaknesses and then discuss optimal strategies and counterplay. Any? The croc's biggest weakness is its reliance on water. on water. This isn't that big a weakness, as just about every player needs to visit a watering hole at some point. Yeah, if your party but... migrates, you'll most likely need to cross a river at some point in order to find more food. But even if you play as a non-migratory build, you'll likely still need to top up your thirst I wonder every... if crocodiles have ever been seen, like, attacking animals on land, you know? Rather than the, like, hide in the water and jump. ...so often to avoid serious stat debuffs. Zebras Still, look like a nice it is a snack. potential vulnerability. If the water in your preferred server begins to dry up, an occurrence that has become more and more frequent in the Anthropocene meta, this can greatly increase the meta. difficulty of your gameplay by removing your stealth and mobility bonuses. Crocodiles don't respawn in the water and instead must build and protect their nests on shore. Objective They're really defense good moms, is always a tough portion of any player's quest line, but doing so in a vulnerable- What is? Crocodiles don't respawn in the water and instead must build and protect their nests on shore. Objective defense is always a tough portion of any player's quest line, but doing so Objective. in a vulnerable state is even more difficult. Another big weakness is their reliance on the death roll combo to score kills. Even though it's a guaranteed kill if a full combo finishes, executing the entire move requires the uninterrupted focus on a single target for a significant period of time. As with most grappler builds, this leaves the user quite vulnerable to attacks from your target's party members. So, how can crocodile players best mitigate this weakness? And how can other players best... Did he really just save that wilderness? What was USAA made for? It's made for him, a veteran who honorably served. Veterans. it's made for her. She's serving now. We also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. Become a member. Get an insurance quote today. Exploit it. So, for crocodile players, the number one thing you need to prioritize during an attack is dragging your target into deeper water. This accomplishes three Get over things. here. Come on. Over one, here. It separates the target from their party. Two, it puts them into a position where their mobility is reduced because of the negative terrain modifier from water. And three, it inflicts the drowning status effect, quickly draining the, the target's The drowning stamina. debuff. I don't even know if that... And reducing the number of opportunities they have to counterattack. 
Of course, this isn't without risk. Dragging a target requires a lot of stamina, and if your stamina runs out while your target is still struggling to get free, they may escape, or worse, counterattack. You can mitigate this by attacking alongside other crocodilian mains, as they can help you drag away your target. Yeah, quicker, but they're gonna take their your meal. Of escape even further. Of course, this means you'll be splitting the loot, but it's worth it for bigger kills. For you non-croc mains watching, obviously the absolute best strategy Ooh, what, is, is he grabbed to onto be his lip or his strong lip? enough to resist being pulled into the water. If you're the one doing the pulling, the croc player isn't oh. going to continue their attack for long. But if that's not an option, Dude, there are this still a channel few tactics is so you can great. try to make your odds more favorable. The first is avoiding deep water. If you need to cross a river or find a spot to drink, you'll be safest if the croc would need to drag you a great distance to get you somewhere uh, you couldn't stand. Uh -oh. Plus, it's a lot more difficult for a croc to hide in shallow water, so you'll be less vulnerable to surprise attacks. If you're a player with Bro, the you ain't to fly slick, or to I climb, see you. you might assume this advice doesn't apply to you. Ooh, he did a little skin. Out of reach of a croc attack. Why did he do that? However, oh, get a fish. keep in mind is that the croc's rudder tail ability has the secondary effect of granting it a greatly increased attack range what? while in deep water. Imagine how strong that tail has to be to do that. I was like, when is it gonna However, go down? It's just like, is that the croc's rudder tail okay. Has the it's still going up. It a it's still going up. Range while in deep water. Damn, that's As strong it tail. Itself a considerable distance to strike is that a monkey or a fruit bat? This is a relatively slow and highly committal option, though. So my advice to flying players is that if you need to approach the surface of the water, keep moving. As striking. Is he doing that for? He doesn't look like he's grabbing any fish. And I don't think they have like talons like a uh, bird has. It looks like they're just like jib, you know, just jibbing on a doing a little skim. Target would require a pretty insane read on the part of the croc player. It's not impossible, Ooh, though, so don't get that was a good grab. Next, I recommend staying with a tight knit party that's willing to fight mm. alongside you. Mm. As mentioned before, the croc's death roll combo is vulnerable to being interrupted. So if your teammate Yo. is being attacked, Pigs, you may be able to save them even if your attacks don't do a lot of damage. Of course, there may be other crocs around, so you're taking a risk in doing so. But still, crocs really can't do much other than flee to deep water if they're being attacked from multiple directions. So coordinated attacks are paramount. This advice also translates for any player trying to loot crocodile nests. This is by no means easy, but since the crocs nests will be on land, the lack of their mobility bonus will make the croc less capable of catching you. The best strategy is to continuously bait out attacks, luring the croc out into the heat. Eventually, this will daze the crocodile, allowing you to loot their nest uncontested. Oh, jeez. If you're a croc, don't worry, though. There are ways to better protect your nest. Making sure there is a patch of shade close to the nest is important to avoid being dazed from the heat exhaustion Ooh, status good effect. good strategy. Another surprisingly powerful and underutilized strategy is to ally with bird players who also nest in the sand. They can protect your eggs from being looted by the more nimble players. Genius. While you can protect their buried eggs from being stomped on by the larger players. Now, one piece of advice I see tossed around is the idea to spec into abilities that would make a crocodile less reliant on water. Yeah, look at those Things legs. like longer legs, replacing claws. That would be food, terrifying. So These ideas have actually been tried in the past and have never really caught on. I get a lot of tags on Twitter asking dog. to mention how overpowered terrestrial crocodile builds were. So a cheetah dog. However, I think history shows the opposite. The two main times terrestrial croc builds have surfaced have been during the most chaotic, underdeveloped metas. First, during the Triassic, aka the expansion that followed the most heavy-handed series of nerfs and bans the game had ever seen. Nerfs and, and bans. And the Paleogene, the expansion that followed the mass ban that removed dinosaurs and pterosaurs from the game. Both of these instances were at a time where the previous top-tier Predator build had been banned, and every faction was taking a shot at trying to control that niche. In the Triassic, Builds like I Moses love Circus walking with dinosaurs to the player base. Or prehistoric beasts. Lystrosaurus was dominating the meta, so having a good matchup against them meant a free top tier spot. However, these terrestrial proto crocodilians quickly lost their top tier status. It's like a cross between a, you know, like a liger. That's like a dog crocodile. A, a crog. <laughs> I don't know. As the more mobile dinosaurs started competing. A dog and died. In the Paleogene, almost the exact same thing happened. Galloping crocodilians Sorry. dominated the early meta, but once the mammal player base started competing for the top tier predator spot, once again, the croc player base couldn't keep up and was forced back into their traditional aquatic ambush role. So, yeah, sorry, Gene. You know, it's not their fault that they're born, you know, predators born, um. Not herbivore, not omnivore. Um.
what what carnivore jesus not their fault you know and so i, I feel bad when they kill things but you know they gotta eat too they Beta gotta fans, feed their you kids you can try again after the next major balance patch but for now oh. there's no shame in sticking to the tried and true game pigs plan are for have real man. over the past several balance patches they're undoubtedly a top tier predator and i can't see their placement on the tier list changing anytime soon a b is Hopefully, on the s tier this video did a good enough job covering the Ooh. crocodilian's optimal strategy and counterplay much of the footage featured in this video is from a documentary called Caring Killers, a film which explores the Nile crocodile build's hunting prowess, but also focuses on showing off the dedication and intelligence demanded from crocodile mains as they guard their respawn points and They're help OP. new croc players get started. It's an impressively interesting documentary, and goes into a lot more depth than I'm able to do in a single YouTube video. If you're interested in watching it, you can gain access to Caring Killers, as well as thousands of other high-quality nonfiction titles, by signing up for Curiosity Stream. Great video. Uh, great channel. Check them out. Obviously, they're a very popular channel, deservedly so. Um, yeah, crocodiles are OP, for sure. They've been around for this long. Sharks, a lot of sharks are OP, too. Um, I'll probably do more of these videos, trying to branch out more. Um, shout out again to Levi. Oh, I said Levy. Levi. Is it Levi? It's probably Levi. Um, he's suggesting a lot of videos. Thank you so much. I love when you guys suggest videos in the comments. Uh, so see you guys next time.